Hello everyone, Russell Wright from Network Empire and ThemeZoom.com. I'm on today with CEO and software architect and my business partner, Sue Bell. Today we're going to talk about keyword data is not keyword data, is not keyword data. Now, what we're looking at is the different, con we're going to be looking at in this conversation is what we call keyword data contradiction. Sue and I have been dealing with this uh, since the beginning of ThemeZoom, all the way back in, what, Sue, 2006 or something? <laughs> Yes. Uh, this is the most common question ever uh, from students of all walks of life, uh, beginner, intermediate, and sometimes in some situations, even advanced long-time users uh, are looking for issues around the contradiction of certain data sets. And we have always talked about how most data is anecdotal, and you have to consider the source. What Sue's going to be doing today, since we get a lot of questions from various students around the world with our various joint venture partners and just our products students, what the difference is between other keyword research tools out there and the way that we pull our data. And Sue's going to just launch right into this. I'll ask questions Sue, as we go through in case they pop into my mind. That sounds good. So the first thing I want to start out with is remember that Google's AdWords platform is designed to make them money. If you keep this in mind, then when you see the data discrepancies, you'll start to realize that what they're trying to do is make money, right? Right. Simple, simple concept. So when you look at the Keyword Planner, there's different options that you can choose, and each of these options give you different data. They, it gives you perspectives of a keyword from a different direction. So the two that are most commonly addressed are search volume and traffic forecasts. And so I just want to take a moment and show you today what the, um, the difference is between those two. Um, we had a keyword, and it has popped right the heck out of my head, something about trucks. It was Austin food truck and Austin food trucks, plural, as in okay. Austin, Texas. Yeah, you got that. All right, so um, one of the things that our keyword tool does also is it targets not just the country, but it also targets the language within the country. So I'll get more into that as now you're we talking. Get in here. Let's not let's be specific, since <clears throat> people all over the world are going to see this video. Yep. You're talking about the last keyword tool. Right? I am. Okay. I am. So I'm, over here on the left hand side of the screen, I'm going to show you the average data. And then oh, when we get over onto the right-hand side of the screen, I'm going to show you what we do for the last keyword tool so that you can see why there's a discrepancy between what the last keyword tool pulls back and what most keyword tools pull back. Cool. All right. So I'm going to get the search volume for this. And I'm probably going to have to open it up so you can see what's going on there. All right. So you can see that this is talking about average searches per month, mm -hmm. and it's giving you a suggested bid and the opportunity to add these to your AdWords plan, right? Okay, yep. So now if I come over here and get a traffic forecast, type in the same words, here I've got the opportunity to specify a language mm -hmm. as well as um, the country in question, and then I can come on here and get forecasts. When I hit here, I need to enter a budget, mm -hmm. which we always max out. I think that's a key then, point that, that what you just did right there is something that's just not done anywhere else. Right. So what we did here is completely different from what we're doing over here. Yeah, that's and, exactly. And so if I click down into this ad group now, because it sums everything up there, yeah. you can see that the values here in terms of clicks and costs are completely different from what's over here. Yep, just on the basic planner thingy. Right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, both of these at the moment are broad match. Mm -hmm. I haven't done anything about uh, negotiating anything other than, and it's even switched this back to all languages, so let me just pop this into English again. I don't think that that's going to actually make a difference, though. <clears throat> all right, so what it's telling me here is that I've got this number of searches, but what it's telling me here is that if I have an ad running, I'm going to get significantly less impressions. And it's also telling me that what people are actually paying for an ad is nothing. There's actually no 
competition running on these keywords at the moment, but it is suggesting wholeheartedly that should I want to place a bid, it suggests $2.56. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, so. Um, have, you been, have you caught a cold recently? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you should really do something for that cough. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so now let me come back here and just download the file that it's going to show me. Um, We'll go ahead and segment it by month. It doesn't really give you any different information, but this allows you to see all of the different information that they can give you. And um, let me just pop it into Excel and download and open this bad boy. And I'll show you what's going on behind the scenes. Hopefully. If my computer hasn't frozen. Uh oh. Not yeah, right? in the middle of our video. Right? Here we okay. go. <laughs> All right. So here. You can see the rest of the story. Okay. Average month okay. Average monthly switch to exact match. Yeah. Competition. So this this only comes in exact match, but that's fine. Those right. are good values. Mm -hmm. So that that's what we would pull back to for um, searches for that particular keyword. Gotcha. And you can see that they vary slightly from month to month, but you've got the averages at the beginning, that's fine. And you can see that the cost is all going to be zeros here. So we would pull back zeros. And so the cost and the clicks are going to be zero. So in our tool, we pull back clicks, we pull back this cost, and we pull back these searches. Average monthly yeah. searches. And typically speaking, most keyword tools are going to give you this for your cost. Because mm -hmm. they're just going what Google suggests, which is very misleading in my opinion. Correct. And they're either pulling that through the API or they're grabbing it off of this one screen, which is a little bit easier to grab. We actually have to download the file to get all the information and downloading you. the file is a pain. I'm going to stop you right there because you know I'm a lobbyist and I love stuff like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, not to beat any other tools down, but this is something what you guys have just seen Sue do. Uh, that I can't tell you how many times we've done variations of this since 2007. I want I want to repeat something that she just said over. It's a lot more work and a little bit co more costly to do what we just showed you, which gives you more accurate data. And I'm saying I'm just coming to come out and say it, Sue. It's more accurate because we give the maximum bid, meaning we're maxing out the budget to sort of give the higher upper echelon of. You're, what you're really saying here, Sue taught me this early on, and in 2008 we first started doing this. When you max the bid out, it's going to kind of surround the camp, right, and give you the entire gamut Correct. of what's possible because you, money's, you're saying to Google, money's no object. Right. So it gives you allegedly whatever scale they have, presuming their scale is even accurate, <laughs> which is as right. good as it can get. And so what's happening here is she also said that she, we have to go a little bit deeper and we have to do several other items uh, within this data in order to make that happen. Yes. Okay. Wait, th this screen is very hard to parse. It's very hard to parse. And don't get us started on that. We'll just <laughs> keep it right and there. The, the other thing that we do is um, within the country, like if I didn't set this, didn't make any difference for these keywords, but for some keywords, it, it makes a difference if I set this to English or mm -hmm. just to all. Mm -hmm. So if you set it to all, then obviously in the foreign language, areas within the United States, mm -hmm. you get some searches. Right. And and so this is going to include those searches. So in particular, like if you look at Canada, where you've got French Canada and you've got English-speaking Canada. So those are two radically different markets. Exactly. And I... And, oh, oh, go ahead. Well, it's just like if you're marketing in Canada, typically speaking, you've got two different websites, one that's in French and one that's in English. And Correct. it's important to understand what degree of market you have in each one of those Exactly. Segments of the country. Exactly. So. And I, I'd like to get in a little bit further about what this actually means, because we've had people hit our help desk and say, well, this tool says it's cost per click, blah, blah. Let's look at the, what this really means. For those of you who have not used Kraken yet, 
The accurate cost per click is super important because the total search market value uses that number to evaluate the entire cash pile of keywords throughout the year. And in order to have an accurate number, if we were to take what Google suggested we bid in this case, it would not indicate the value of the total search market value because you're going to take $2.56 times whatever, right, per year? Right, 2,900 right. 2, times 12. It would be an artificial... If we actually use the data that you guys are asking about all the time, it would we would not be able to calculate more advanced things like we have in our advanced uh, tools that are known worldwide for calculating entire market probabilities of costs. And we, we call it TSMV, named by Sue, total search market value. So this is really key. If we were to use the suggested bid, which gave Sue a cold, and she started coughing, <laughs> uh, we would not be able to have, we would be giving data that's extremely misleading in our more advanced features. So we wanted to understand why, that first of all, we take the maximum bid, and the we don't want Google's suggestion for the cost per click. We want the actual ads. And another way you can check this, I wasn't gonna get into this now, but whenever data has this, you can find all kinds of pay-per-click items that have suggested bids that if you go to the search engines, you will see there are no ads. Austin right. Food Truck is precisely the case. All you have to do, you know, again, people who hit our house to help desk, they don't go and do this because they don't know this, but there's no ads on that particular topic, at least not at the time of this video. Okay, that because no one's bidding on it. <laughs> There's nothing there. I'm looking at it right now. There's nobody there. Okay, so that being said, I'm in the phrase match specifically is what I'm looking at. So that that being said, I just want everybody to be aware that uh, this this is a common help desk question, and it's a it's a great question. We want you to understand this data. That's really great, Sue. I mean, I definitely it never never fails to to blow my mind like that. You know, we have, we can have a question that can span a decade. <laughs> yeah, yep. it's still here, exactly. <laughs> and we're still doing it, right? <laughs> <laughs> still doing it after since 2007. Nah, it's all great. You have anything else you want to add to this? Is there other things that are on your you mind? Know, I I think that's it for this video in terms of the data that Google gives. And well, the other thing that I will add is, um, depending on the keywords that mm -hmm. you ask Google to give you values for. Right. It will change the cost and uh, and the traffic. So, in yes. other words, if you put in a large list of keywords and you've got like both of these keywords pretty valueless, right? They they don't have a lot of traffic. Well, mm -hmm. they don't have anybody bidding on them. Mm -hmm. So Google's not going to differentiate. You can put in more keywords and and it's not going to go too much lower, obviously, because there's not really anything lower to go on. Mm -hmm. But when you've got a large list of keywords and they span everything from um, broad market keywords to niche keywords, yeah. it's going to inflate the value of the broad keywords and deflate the value of the niche keywords. Uh -huh. And the reason why it does this is because they would really like for you to spend more money with them. And so what? obviously, yeah, right? So if you look at it from a profit perspective, Forget it makes about a lot it. of sense. And and they're, they look at it and they're like, well, if you're already interested in these more expensive keywords, then here, like, let me just make them look a little bit more valuable to you. Weigh mm -hmm. your appetite, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so what we do in an effort to get you more information for the niche keywords is um, we'll go through and put those niche keywords in a second time together so that there's we, we take out all of the broad stuff, we just focus on those keywords that have little or no value and try to get them to inflate those values a bit more so that, that they're more real. Mm -hmm. and, um, exactly. And, you know, looking at that too, which is more advanced pay-per-click methods that, you know, that's part of the reason the Google Planner came into existence was the neuroeconomics of, you know, getting people to inflate their, well, anyways, <coughs> coughing again. Um, but, you know, all that, I'm not blaming Google for trying to make a buck. But to me, it's always very interesting that once you know that even trying to give, just because a keyword doesn't have a cost per click doesn't actually mean it's not valuable. I mean, it'll be more Correct. what we call an educational keyword. You know, I mean, if you really think about it, like Austin food cards, people who own food cards aren't going to be doing pay-per-click ads. Like, why would you do a pay-per-click ad to drive traffic to your Austin food cart unless you were selling a franchise or something? I mean, I suppose it could happen, but normally it's not. So, But that doesn't mean the keyword is not valuable if you're selling other things or if you're doing something related to that. I just, you know, again, think it through when, when you're looking at a keyword and and looking at the source of it. Yeah, there's clearly a reason why Google put a suggested bid of 256 for this word mm -hmm. and not for this word. Yeah. And you know, it could be that there are related words that it's found that um, 
that are more related to this word. Maybe they're trucks oriented as opposed to truck oriented well, that people bid on, or you know, there could be any number of reasons why it perceives that that word you ought to bid more on than the other word that it should, you should find it more valuable. Well, it could just be the searches as well. Well, I also noticed this may not be related to what you're saying, but uh, there are a lot of um, reviews on the Google search engine for food trucks that are, you know, like the East Side King food truck. Like they have, the, they do have a local listing, a semantic markup listing, ah. you know, but they're not pay-per-click. I mean, obviously there's right. restaurants. I'm, I'm guessing this is just a huge guess. I could be totally wrong. It could be pulling from the word truck, you know, so they think we're going to bid on Fords or something. <laughs> but right. when I look here, it does seem like there's quite a few. Um, there are people in in Austin that do have reviews. There are food trucks that have reviews. I don't know. that You could be right, though. So the point is that we really don't know for sure while they're inflating it. I, I would tend to speculate that Sue's probably right. It's in the automobile industry, so <laughs> maybe they're looking at trucks. I don't know. Austin trucks. But they're smarter than that, though. I don't know. I think so, yeah. No, it's just um, over here in the the export. It does show some impressions yeah. for, for trucks. So that makes me think that at some point in time, although not within the last 12 months, somebody has bid on that keyword. So that's kind of an interesting piece of information. And as we write the keyword tool, maybe we'll include some uh, some additional information so you get a little bit more background there. But the truth of the matter is um, you could pick up on that just simply from the fact that you've got more searches for trucks than you do for truck. Yeah. And, um, and I think that the important information is that nobody's bidding on it currently. Hasn't for a while. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Okay, very good. I mean, I really think you've answered this question, and we'll, we're going to put this as a help file, and we'll refer everybody else to it. And thanks, you. This is perfect. Thank you so much, Russell. All it's right, been a good. pleasure.